In what ways does your media project products use, develop or challenge forms and conventions of real media products? If I take my documentary apart, it helps show where and how I have followed certain conventions. Starting with the beginning of the documentary, we have included vox pops. Not all documentaries have to include vox pops, but they are, they are a common convention that are used at the beginning and sometimes throughout. It also shows the opinion from the general public about your chosen topic. Having vox pops helps to introduce the exposition of the documentary and leads nicely into the title sequence and introduction. These, the conventions of these are that they shouldn't be too long or short and overpowering. Our title sequence was quite simple yet effective as we just used Katie pretending to get ready in the mirror and sped it up and used effects in Premiere to help it resemble the style of a silent movie, also making it black and white. We had to ensure that the title sequence was eye-catching and kept you, interest, kept you interested to make, make you want to watch the rest of the documentary. This was also in line with the topic, as our documentary is about vintage fashion. We made sure that throughout the documentary, the mise-en-scene related to vintage fashion, including the title sequence. Similar to the title sequence, the introduction had to be short and sweet, capturing the attention of the audience in just a few sentences. It had to be informative, giving the audience not too much or too little inf- information. We did this by just having a few seconds of our narrator just introducing what vintage fashion is. This then introduced our first set of interviews. Our narrator follows the documentary co- conventions. It follows it back because in most documentaries, the n- narrator has an authoritative voice but is also engaging with their tone. We chose a female authoritative voice because it fit better with our theme and we thought the audience could relate more to a female. It follows the conventions by being a voice of God narration. It also follows conventions by the way we edited the sound. We raised and lowered the sound around the narration so she would fade in and out at the correct times. The interview section of our documentary is where a lot of our conventions were followed. With the interviews, there are a lot of things to focus on, including making sure the camera is on the right position, the sound is okay, etc. Many of the interviews we did follow the conventions of an interview, including rule of thirds, and made sure that the interviewees were sat in the correct position corresponding with the camera, so there was a space next to them on the screen where the graphics would be placed. To make the interviews a bit different each time, we ensured that we alternated between interviewees being placed on the left and on the right, Interviews are meant to be filmed at about a medium close-up level, so you're not including too much of their body. This is what we did. In some of the shots, we could have done this slightly better because of in some of this, including the one with Ellie, there was so much space around the shot. We should have brought the camera closer or zoomed in so we got less background and more of her. In post-production, we were able to fix this, but it would have been better if we would have done it whilst filming. We had to ensure that the follow to follow the next convention that the interviewee never looked towards the camera when being filmed because this is direct address and we don't want that in the interview. We made sure of this by making sure the interviewee was sat off centre along with the interviewee, interviewer sat next to the camera unable to be seen. With the interviewee just looking straight at the person asking questions, this was hard to achieve sometimes because in some interviews they kept turning to the camera slightly which is understandable considering how intimidating the cameras are. The sound is an important factor to the documentary because we had to ensure the sound levels were correct throughout all the interviews. The music we used actually worked with the documentary and also there was no, there was no unnecessary background music in the interviews. Most of this was done by in editing, but the sound, to make sure the sound was usable in interviews, we made sure that when we were filming... The microphone was hidden on the clothing of the interviewee but wasn't being covered by something that would make the sound muffled. We encouraged the interviewees to sit still and not fidget because it would translate through the microphone. Similar to this, we filmed Vox Pops. We used the boom mic, which captured background noise and foreground. This was bad for us during Vox Pops and made them unusable because the background noise was so loud. We had non-diegetic and diegetic sound in the documentary. These included the music and actual dialogue of the documentary. The music we used in our documentary was relevant because it was similar to 60s, 80s swing music, which linked with the documentary as we were going going for that really old feel. We adjusted the sound levels throughout the documentary so it wasn't playing over any dialogue and faded in and out at the right points. In the editing process, the conventions we followed were making sure that we had a good pace throughout the documentary. This is important because having a slow pace can make the audience get quite bored and not want to watch any more. When piecing together the documentary, we had to find a good structure to use where everything was being explained and not 
but not too fast that the audience would get confused. This is why we have the narration and the cutaways to split up the documentary sections. The structure had to flow and wasn't just jumping through topics. We had to do the structure a few times to ensure we had it right. Cutaways were the most important part of ensuring a good, watchable documentary. This is also the bit I found most difficult, ensuring that we had enough cutaways to fill in all the small gaps and cover any jump cuts was quite difficult because we had to get a huge variety of them but still make sure they are relevant. We used a lot of cutaways during the voiceover parts which explain the next topic. Along with the cutaways we used archive footage which just included small clips that showed fashion from the different eras as there were, there were not many shots we could fully achieve ourselves. Finally, the mise-en-scene of the overall documentary was really important because the backgrounds had to be relevant and somehow linked with our vintage fashion theme. I feel we achieved this to the best of our ability. There possibly were some backgrounds we could have tried to, tried to cut out, but we used, we used quite a lot of fashion-type ones. For example, the background we used for Luke's interview was just plain white, whilst Erin's was filmed with the background being the textiles being full of fabric. My documentary overall is very conventional, very conventional, especially with the interviewers, because if we compare it to one from a professional documentary, e.g. The Devil Made Me Do It, the way the backgrounds and positioning in, is in those interviews is how mine are too. Our newspaper advert followed all the conventions of a typical print ad because this helped us create a professional print advert, including simple things like ensuring that the Channel 4 logo is placed where it typically would be, on the right hand side of the picture slightly in the middle. We made sure there was information that was important, website and schedule information, tagline and other necessary information. Our font and sizing of the fonts were conventional, making sure they were the same as typical font Channel 4 use. Usually the position from the Channel 4 text and information is in the bottom corner surrounded by a block of colour. Our image for the print ad was a hand coming out of the ground wearing a vintage glove and holding a pocket watch. We chose these items because they reflected the things spoken about in the documentary, which makes the image easier to understand. Our image certainly captures the audience's attention, as you even know, it's quite a dark image now. With the edit we put on it, the lightning creates a feel that is actually being electrocuted. It's a very striking image, which is one of the conventions of an advert. The title and tagline had to be placed in a place where it wasn't covering all the image, but it was still was a good size and position, so it was readable. We achieved all of these conventions. Our radio trailer follows all the conventions of a typical radio advert, which includes being short and engaging. Our trailer was about 35 seconds, so it was between the typical guidelines of how long a trailer should be. In this 35 seconds, we ensured that we put everything we needed in there. This links to the other convention, which is including quotes from the documentary or even using the Vox Pops as sort of hints to what's in the documentary without giving too much away. We did this by including three out of four tiny snippets of people's answers to why they liked vintage fashion and why they shop at charity shops. To make it work, we had to edit it perfectly so the clips faded in and the, to the correct point after the voiceover ended. Voiceovers for radio trailers are standard English and are usually the same person that that did the narration for the documentary. Our voiceover and narration was the same, which kept everything linked together, I believe. Our voiceover was there to lay down some facts and figures to get people interested in the topic, but without overloading the information. Facts and figures and statistics is a vital part of the radio trailers, because having facts gives people a little bit more information on the topic before they even watch the documentary. Finally, the ending of all trailers, it ended with the voiceover saying the schedule information nice and channel that the documentary is on. Ours followed this and we did it in a way that flowed nicely. Our slogan helped this because our slogan is associated with time, bringing, past, bringing the past to life, so it flows nicely into the ending of the trailer. Overall, all my media products follow all the conventions that are outlined within their categories.